Hello, welcome back. We're doing another top five. The last time I did this, I got like insane views for my channel. It's sad that insane for me is about 400 views. But then again, I have 151 subscribers, so that's more subscribers than I have. Anytime I get a, a video with views more than the subscribers I have, I think that's probably insane. So this is top five, and this is Christian Bale. Um, I've seen 27 films that he's been in. So, it's not everything. There are definitely some films on here where I was like, I didn't see that. But I don't think that it really matters. I, s I guess when I was trying to look at the totality of the work and decide whether or not can I do a top five for Christian Bale. Uh, and I was thinking about what types of films, based on what I know from, you know, the film geeks out there of, of the world like me, uh, if I debated with people, what films would, what roles would we likely debate about? And I think arguably he has maybe eight to 10. And the biggest one that I think I haven't seen is The Machinist. I just never had any desire, you know? I mean, I get it. He was like 80 pounds. <laughs> he lost an insane amount of role, of, of weight for that role. Um, but... I don't feel like... I feel like I can create a, a solid top five here without needing The Machinist. Because there were roles that I liked already that are in my honorable mentions. So it doesn't necessarily mean that he would have... That that role would have cracked the top five. I feel good about my top five. So, let's get into it. Starting off at number five is The Prestige. Uh, if you haven't seen The Prestige... This may be like a question mark for you. You may be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, where are the other films at? And you may be, maybe they're later in the list. Uh, why is the prestige here? Uh, well, um, he's playing two people. So I guess that's a spoiler if you haven't seen the prestige. Because that is the prestige. <laughs> but it's it's a dual performance. And usually when that happens, we usually get pretty excited about it. Uh, we're like, oh my god, he's, oh, look at what he's doing. He's able to create two two people. And look at how amazing that is. And you don't even realize that it is two people until sort of the reveal of the film. You see the little nuances and differences in the characters and the choices that he makes. And, and I feel like Christian Bale had a lot more complicated process trying to reach this character and understand this character. It's, I think it's an underrated performance of his. I love the film. I think this film is stacked full of performances that are really good, and it's a fantastic movie. Um, even though I just told you what the ending of the film is. <laughs> so, uh, but then again, this film came out in like 2005? Six, seven? Seven, something like that. Anyway, it's old. It's old enough um, that you should have seen it by now. Uh, so, yeah. It's, it's pretty safe to have seen that already. Anyway, Prestige um, made, made, makes the cut in number five. Number four is, this may seem low, I'm sure for some people this would be number one, but hold, hold tight, we'll get there. Number four is Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. Um, it is an iconic role. It also feels like it's near the beginning of Christian Bale's career when he hasn't fully realized all of the various things he can bring to his roles. So he's playing sort of this yuppie um, psychopath. You know, it's, uh, it's an interesting performance. It's based on a book. Um, and he definitely does stuff with it and that I think makes people go, hey, look at me, I'm Christian Bale. And I think it's the point in his career where he really sort of transforms himself into an adult actor. A lot of the stuff that he had done before, he was young. Uh, and then he kind of started fading into more indie projects with like Velvet Goldmine. Um, but before that, he was doing, you know, what, like Empire of the Sun, Newsies, Swing Kids. I mean, like his career was totally different. You wouldn't think that it get on to the Christian Bale of today. I love Newsies, by the way, but um, I can't say that that performance is a top five performance. But I'm one of the few people who love Newsies and loved it 
way before they brought it back to Broadway. Um, this feels like the transformative moment in his career where he just flips the switch and moves forward and Patrick Bateman is an iconic role already. It's weird. It's sort of like he stepped into something that was iconic and just performed it really well. So American Psycho is number four on my list. Uh, number three on my list is... <sighs> Veep. Um, Dick Cheney. Uh, the, yeah, I I think that uh, the, that him playing Dick Cheney in Vice. Why does he say Veep? Vice. Uh, <laughs> his performance as Selena Meyer is amazing. Um, no, his performance as Dick Cheney in, in Vice uh, is... I, I, it's, I, I didn't realize it was him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's so, he just, he's lost. He's gone in that role. It's, it's, it's on another level. I find it so weird that Sam Rockwell got recognized for that for playing George W. Bush, but, um, not, he didn't win, but still like the nomination. I'm like, how do you even, I felt like Bale took up all of that film. I think, just, I think it's a great performance. And, uh, sure, he benefits from it being one of those makeup performances for him, where he's just caked in makeup. Uh, but at the same time, somebody like Christian Bale shouldn't be able to play Dick Cheney. This little British young youngster, uh, coming in and playing Dick Cheney is... I don't feel like that that was necessarily the choice in my head, if if somebody was like, oh, who would play Dick Cheney in this movie? I don't think I would have said Christian Bale. So it's amazing that he was the casting choice. And then he really ends up nailing the role in such a perfect way that you feel like, is Dick Cheney in this film? Is, it, is that really, maybe? It's an interesting film, too. Um, so I love just the surprises and the twists and the turns that it makes. I thought it was a pretty good film. A little bit underrated, so... Number three on my list. Um, now is usually when I, I I think about, do I put my honorable mention above three or above two? Like, what what is interesting? What, what to me? And I feel like people are thinking what the top two are, and I want to leave you in suspense. So I'll go ahead and tell you what's not in the top two by saying my honorable mentions. Um, I want to give honorable mention shout-outs to his role in American Hustle, for which he was nominated He's, yeah, it's a good performance. Uh, I think, though, he's he's still young. And I think it's one of those performances that by the time at the end of his career, I'm not sure it's a performance that we'll all remember. I'm not sure it would be a top five or a top ten performance um, by the end of his career. I think it's just a really good performance of his. But it is a really good performance of his. <laughs> so not to take anything away from that. Um, I thought he did a really good job in American Hustle. Um, I want to address the fact that he brings so much to the English dub cast of Howl's Moving Castle, which is a fantastic Miyazaki movie if you've never seen it. Um, and Bale does uh, just some really terrific work in that cast. Uh, it's nice to see him in that film and uh, to see what it is that he he's able to do with that film. And, um, I guess I already mentioned the fact that I love Newsies, but I, I don't know. Is that a role for me? I, I don't know. I mean, Jack Kelly, I feel like, yeah, I mean, he kind of helped to start this thing that had an underground movement that launched into a Broadway musical. So there's something to be said for that, but also the music kind of did that. I don't know how much of that was Christian Bale. There's something to be said for being the star of something that has that sort of cult phenomenon feel to it. Like, if I'm talking about Bette Midler's career, I don't know how I don't talk about Hocus Pocus. Because for it to stay as popular as it did for so many years when it bombed at the box office, Newsies bombed. Newsies was a huge box office failure. So for the fact that those films did not do well, yet they ended up 
having fans and standing the test of time and you know we got a hocus pocus too but we also got a newsies broadway musical that ran that outstayed its welcome uh it was originally it wasn't even supposed to go to broadway they were just doing a paper mill playhouse run of it to get it so that they could sell it um to other theaters but that paper mill playhouse thing was so well received and did so well that they were like well we'll give it a short and broadway run which ended up getting extended and, you know, there's even a taped live version of the musical. So everything just kind of feels like there's a reason for that. And to acknowledge the fact that Christian Bale had to have been such a huge part of that cult beginning and cult following, I think is totally fair. So he has a lot of films on here that I feel like could be honorable mentions from Rescue Dawn to, I'm sure this is where I would put in The Machinist if I had seen it. But uh, that's just because Christian Bale is a fantastic actor. Um, there really isn't anything that I didn't like him in except Amsterdam, to be honest. I'm sorry, I just didn't like Amsterdam. <laughs> I didn't like him in it either. I just, I don't know that that film that really did anything for me. But um, anyway, so what are my top two and how did I line them up? I think you know what they are. But uh, number two for me is... Bruce Wayne in Batman Begins. I usually, when I do this, I, I, I'm talking about roles. So it doesn't necessarily think, I'm not saying Batman Begins is the best film, but it is where the role started for him. That's where Bruce started. And the journey that he takes Batman on, it does have the benefit of having three films. So he is taking Batman on a journey. Uh, and you're asking yourself, if you put Batman at number two, what the hell could be at number one? <laughs> Listen, I love the Batman trilogy, but there is there is one performance of Christian Bale's that just stops me in my tracks every time where I'm just like, I think Bale just knocked it out of the park. But I can't, I can't ignore the fact that his, uh, his Bruce Wayne is fantastic. What he starts, where he starts off with and where he ends, just the journey that he takes Bruce Wayne on in that trilogy was fantastic. And it's, it's sad that it's it's the kind of role that we overlook. You know, we have no problem giving villains nominations. We, we've given Academy Awards now to two people playing the Joker. We've never nominated anybody for playing Batman. So um, I think that's very telling as to what we value in performances um, and almost how a hero really never stands a chance at that sort of recognition no matter how far your hero's journey goes we prefer our villains um they're just a little bit more fun horrible people but a little bit more fun yeah my number one uh pick is the fighter uh dickie is just it's a tremendous performance and for those people who are like oh he lost weight for the machinist he should get well you know he lost a lot of weight for the fighter too so um, he was so convincing in the fighter. I feel like I lost Christian Bale. I remember the first time I saw that film and I, I didn't really even see Christian Bale in that, in that role. Um, it was like, I saw Dickie. Uh, it's, he just, he disappears. Um, it's such a fantastic performance from his. It's always sticked with me. It was exactly what I knew. Uh, forming the list from two to five was harder than figuring out what my number one was. Even with Bruce Wayne and the Dark Knight on here, uh, trying to line up the rest of the list, but I knew the fighter was always going to be on top for me because it's always been the role where I always think of what was Christian Bale's best performance for me, and it's always been the fighter, and I'm so glad that this is where you know he was recognized as supporting actor, it's a damn good film, too, by the way. All four actors really do a fantastic job in that film. Uh, Mark Wahlberg, Amy Adams, and Melissa Leo being the other three. Actually, all do really good work. Um, but Bale, damn, he just steals that show. So, uh, that's my number one pick. I hope you guys like that. I hope you guys agree with it. If you don't agree with it, let me know which film you think should have been in the top in the comments and as always 
I will, of course, be back for more, so make sure you did click that subscribe button so you can get more top fives from me. And I will see you guys on the other side.